Joining me now is House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer. Representative Hoyer, thank you so much for being here and welcome to Capital Review. So I understand you tested positive for the coronavirus and you're isolating at home. Can you give us an update on how you're feeling? Well, I'm feeling fine. Uh, what I feel like is I have a head cold. Uh, no fever, you know, people tell me they have headaches and they're nausea and I have none of those symptoms, uh, knock on wood. Uh, and uh, thankfully, uh, I, I had uh, both vaccinations, uh, Pfizer, uh, and I had the booster shot. And uh, I'm convinced that the reason the symptoms are so mild and my illness is so mild uh, is because I had the shots and took the booster. And I would urge every American uh, to get those shots and, and get a booster. Uh, it is obvious that literally billions of shots have been given around the world with de minimis, almost infinitesimal adverse results. So um, I, 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 I'm feeling pretty good and I hope that others would uh, get, get the shots so that if they get infected uh, with any one of these strains, that, that they'll feel good as well. Yeah, well, glad you're feeling okay, and I know you'll be feeling even better in no time. So let's start local, since we do have a lot to talk about. You represent the 5th Congressional District in Maryland. This week, unfortunately, started off with the number of bomb threats targeted towards historically black colleges and universities across the country, including Howard University in D.C. and Bowie State. That's in your district. And unfortunately, it was a second time this year that they got a bomb threat. So have you spoken to anyone, or is there a plan to stop the hate-based violence against HBCUs? Look, it is so sad that here we are in uh, 2022 in America, a country that has dedicated itself to the equality of all people, although not lived out those principles. We had a civil war to establish that. We voted on civil rights bills. Uh, we preach tolerance and acceptance. Uh, we, and we talk about and we, we put our hand over our hearts and pledge uh, uh, fidelity to one nation indivisible. Uh, and it is so sad that what we see around the country is uh, uh, not the practice of that. So I've written to uh, Attorney General Garland. I've written to uh, the Secretary of Homeland Security, Mayorkas. And yesterday I talked to Amita, my good friend, Amita Bro, the president of Bowie State. Uh, things have calmed down there. They, 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 they did not find a device. Um, but this fear mongering, this hate mongering, has got to stop and we all need to speak out against it. And following that, the push to pass voting rights is an issue you've been passionate about. And it's a big year. We've got midterm elections. Maryland right now is dealing with redistricting. A lot can happen in both the federal and state government just over the next couple of months. So as House leader, do you and is there, is there hope to get voting rights legislation passed? And if there is, what does that bill look like? You know, I have a picture out in front of my office of my dear, dear friend and brother. John Lewis, who uh, I was very, very close to him, walked across the Edmund Pettus Bridge with him 15 times to commemorate a Bloody Sunday, which was a vote not only to be able to register, but to be able to vote. Voting rights is critical. Voting rights historically has been a bipartisan a piece of legislation that's passed overwhelmingly and been signed by Republican and Democratic presidents. How sad it is that we are having such trouble getting voting rights done. But we're not going to quit. Giving up is not an option. Voting is central to our democracy. Voting is a, a right that every citizen has, and we ought to facilitate them in doing so, not making it more difficult as is, ha is happening in, in state after state after state, making it more difficult to cast the vote. That's wrong. We need to pass this bill, and uh, I want you to, you and your and, and your viewers, uh, to know, does mean that every Democrat voted for this voting rights bill. Every Democrat in the House and every Democrat in the Senate. Unfortunately, uh, the procedures in the Senate provide that you need 60 votes. Not a single Republican uh, supported the voting rights legislation, and how sad that is. And it's such a change from what historically has happened. So we're gonna keep fighting and I have hope that we're gonna get something done. So what is your message? What's been your reaction to Senators Manchin and Cinema for not changing the rules of the filibuster, but also to both, like you're saying, both the Democratic senators and Republicans for holding back the voting rights legislation? Well, again, I wanna emphasize that uh, every Democrat, including Manchin and Cinema, supported the Voting Rights Act that we sent over to them, uh, which included uh, the, the, the right to vote, uh, facilitating the vote, 
and the John Lewis Act, which fixed what the Supreme Court's decision unfixed in the Voting Rights Act uh, by prohibiting preclearance. Uh, we expanded preclearance to all 50 states so that uh, discriminatory actions could not be taken, preventing people or making it more difficult for them to vote. Uh, my message to uh, Senator Manchin and Senator Sinema uh, is, look, the filibuster is undemocratic. The filibuster ought to be eliminated entirely. But certainly the filibuster in this instance ought to be eliminated uh, for the minority to undermine the majority from voting, either because of not passing the voting rights or because of honoring the filibuster is, is, is just, in my opinion, not consistent with American democracy. So my message to this is think carefully about it and let this voting rights bill pass with a majority vote in the United States Senate. The majority should rule. And the majority certainly should rule in protecting the rights of the minority. And a lot more to talk about with Leader Hoyer. When we come back, we're hearing about the Build Back Better plan, the infrastructure projects that could be coming to Maryland, and also the Make It in America plan. You'll want to hear about that. You're watching Capitol Review.